How do I reformat a disk? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. Ask Leo is supported in large part by its patrons. Join now to get access to patron exclusive content as well as an ad free experience at AskLeo.com. Visit AskLeo.com slash patron to learn more. So formatting a hard disk, it's something that I think a lot of us take for granted, but not everybody really knows how to do. Let me show you. In fact, I'm going to show you four different ways to reformat your hard drive. So here we are in Windows 10 Home. I'm firing up Windows File Explorer. And down here, you'll see I've got this little one gigabyte. It's a USB thumb drive. I'll right click on it and click on, of all things, Format. Format then gives me some options. It's worth going through what some of these options may or may not be on your particular device, whatever it is you're formatting. The capacity is what it is. It's generally the capacity of this device. Like I said, this is a one gigabyte thumb drive. So it's going to be available as 956 megabytes after all the overhead is removed. We have some options in terms of file systems. Um, this actually has the longest list of options that I've actually seen. FAT is the default for something this small. FAT32 is a great alternative for larger devices that are intended to be shared across multiple non-window devices. So for example, if you were formatting an SD card to be used in your camera or your cell phone, XFAT would be the way to go. NTFS, on the other hand, is a good alternative for internal drives or for external hard drives that are large-ish that you want the full range of NTFS features, including BitLocker or permissions, or it's also a little bit faster on some devices. So NTFS is an option. When you're not sure, just accept the default. That's fine. Uh, you can see it's actually called out both FAT and FAT32. This device is small enough that it doesn't need FAT32. FAT16, also just plain old FAT, um, is perfect for a one gigabyte drive. Allocation unit size. This is an interesting one. Uh, on FAT, there really aren't that many options. On NTFS, there are a bunch. On some of the other formats, there's a difference. The issue here is essentially, when you write data to a file, it's not actually allocated according to the size of the file. The space on the disk isn't allocated that way. It's allocated in chunks. And what we're saying here is how big should those chunks be? So on this drive, for example, with the default of 16 kilobytes for an allocation size, a one byte file is going to take up 16 kilobytes. It's going to use or have allocated to it 16 kilobytes of disk space. Now, everything under 16 kilobytes will also, it'll just be that 16 kilobytes. When you then exceed 16 kilobytes, you get 16 kilobytes and one, well, it has to allocate then another chunk of 16 kilobytes. Like I said, the choices vary depending on how you're planning on using this device, which are available, which allocation unit sizes are available for the format you've selected, uh, whether you're going to have lots and lots of small files versus like one or two really big files, how many files you're going to have in total. All of these can factor into this decision. It's not necessarily an easy one unless you really have a good idea of the criteria that you're looking for. That's why, once again, I'm going to suggest that unless you have specific criteria that you're trying to target, accept the default, which in this case is 16 kilobytes. If you've been playing around, by the way, say we said 64 kilobytes or we changed it to like XFAT, uh, we went back to uh, 32 kilobytes, whatever. If you want to go back to the device defaults, just hit that button and it will basically make its recommendations once again. The volume label, that's just the text that appears here and shows up on directory listings in the command prompt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this to example, just so that we can see that this is one way to change that and have it be set to something other than whatever the device came with, if there's one at all. Quick format. I'm going to do that. But when we do, we're going to get a warning first. We're about to erase all the data on this disk. And that's something that I think you really, really need to understand about formatting. By definition, formatting means to erase everything that's on the drive. That means that whatever is there now won't be there when we're done. 
That's typically what we want. That's typically why we format a drive. And in fact, a quick format is probably the fastest way to erase everything on a drive that's full of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we're done. Quick formatting really is pretty quick. Now, when we uncheck quick format, we're going to perform what's called a full format. The difference is important to understand. With a quick format, all that really happens is the formatting software sets up the structures, the data structures on the, da on the disk that track where files will live. There are no files, so it's setting up empty data structures, but it's just basically setting up a directory that says, yep, this disk is empty, got no files. But it's not doing anything to the rest of the drive. If we do a full format, what it's going to do first, and I'm going to go ahead and kick it off here. Once again, it's going to warn us, and we're going to click OK. If we do a full format, what it's going to do is very carefully, very methodically, it's going to go through and overwrite everything on that drive. As you can see, it's already taken longer than the quick format. It'll take a few minutes for this one gigabyte external drive. It's a USB 2 thumb drive. It's an old one I had laying around for example purposes, but it's going to take a little bit of time and it's taking time because it's actually writing one full gigabyte of data to this thumb drive. It does that so as to overwrite anything that might have been there before. The difference then is very important. With a quick format, the data that used to be there, it's still kind of there. And it's possible that data recovery software could recover some of the files that were on that disk after a quick format. A full format methodically overwrites all of the data on the drive, making it not impossible, but significantly more difficult to recover the data on that drive. It's important to do a full format, say if there were sensitive data on that drive. Even if you're not sure, somebody might recover the data. This is what you want to do before you give a hard drive away. This is what you want to do before you give a computer away. You want to carefully erase all of the data on that drive, and that means doing a full format. As long as this is taking, it's the quickest way to ensure that whatever you had on that drive, be it sensitive or not, is not going to be recovered by somebody in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish. And we're done. Like I said, you can see that that took a little bit longer than the quick format. Exactly how long will depend on exactly how big your disk is, and how fast it is and how fast the interface is. Uh, for example, like I said, this thumb drive is a USB 2 thumb drive. I've got it plugged into a USB 3 port, but that didn't help me at all. So you get the idea. It depends on the device, how big it is and how fast it is, how long a full format will take. Now, so far I've shown you two ways of formatting a disk. I promised you four. For the other two, which are basically just the same thing we've just done in a different form, we're actually going to fire up Windows PowerShell. This all works in command prompt as well. Your choice. PowerShell, command prompt, admin or not. The key, of course, is a command called, not surprisingly, format. Now, I'm going to quickly do it with a slash question mark because that'll show you what all of the options are to this tool. Um, I'm not going to go through them all here. Obviously, there's a lot of them, but you get the idea. There's a, a lot of different options, a lot of different things you can do, a lot of uh, different settings that may or may not apply. I'm going to format this hard drive again, but I'm going to do it just using the command line. So if we say format, format H says insert the disk. It's actually still optimized for floppy disks for removable drives. We've already got it attached. I'm going to hit enter, doing a fat file system. And now the default turns out to be a full format. And by verifying 957 megabytes, well, it's actually writing 957 megabytes. Um, I'm going to let this complete and we will come back as soon as it's done. Now, in this case, since there is no field that I have specified the volume label beforehand or I didn't add it on the command line, 
it's asking me for what I want that to be. And then I'll once again type in example, and you can see then that we now have this disk as example. In fact, if I take a look at what's on H, it just says there's nothing there. If I check disk it, you can see that volume is named example, uh, when it was created, which is just now, uh, how big it is and so forth. But you get the idea that it has been formatted. Now, interestingly enough, as it was chugging through the format, it dawned on me why a full format is the default for the format command. If I go back to format H and add slash Q, that's a quick format and it's done. It was literally that fast that I get to enter my volume title again. The reason that it defaults to a full format, floppy disks. Back in the day, floppy disks had to be formatted before they could be used. And by formatted, I mean literally the surface had to be formatted to be able to hold the data. And that's a side effect. That's why the name is format, but it's why the default for the command line version, which goes all the way back to MS-DOS and before even, why it defaults to being a full format. But there you go. Four different ways in two different utilities how to format your hard disks and USB thumb drives and whatever else appears as a disk on your system. Hope that was helpful. Hopefully maybe even a little bit entertaining. For updates, for related links, for comments and more, visit askleo.com slash 135005. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.